Hey guys, welcome back to Kim Style Reviews. This is one that I wasn't super excited for. Figured it was going to be a nice product, but a lot of people were talking about it. This is the first in Sindo's Chaodan Karao line of Samurai Troopers or Ronin Warriors figure. This is Ryo. So, yeah, Ryo of the Wildfire. And you can see, he's right there. This is 112th ish scale. And he is about five and three quarter inches tall, so right under six inches. Now, it's close to six inches, but if you have six inch figures, that quarter, since they're so small, it's gonna, it's gonna matter. Now, of course, his armor, variety of faces, hands, and his blades. All right? And there are some different configurations to the swords and things like that, and we will definitely go over them during the review. But first, it comes in his Under Armour. So a lot similar to the Bandai Armour Plus figures, but from what I've read, a lot better quality. Now the uh, one thing that I did on mine, I took some Future Polish, put a couple of drops in uh, both areas of the double knees. They were fine, stood up fine, everything like that, but they just weren't... They weren't loose, but they weren't tight enough to where I felt secure long term, if that makes sense. Alright. There's a roundabout, now let's dig into this thing. Alright, so going over its articulation again, five and three quarter inches tall. His head just come, goes on a peg there. I'm going to take off a face as well. For whatever reason, they gave the, for lack of a better term, mullet part of his hair. It's separate from the rest. And what's especially crazy is that it doesn't really move. And then this piece just pegs in, put a face on, like so, and then the front of there. Right. So honestly, really, if you guys collected their four inch nail line, it's a lot like those figures, but bigger, more firm, etc. So butterfly and all around on that shoulder piece there. That is fantastic. This flap here on the under armor goes up and down. There's the around. Move that up so it's out of the way. And then this by itself goes parallel about perfect that 90 degrees there. But then you can take that and put it more up. Okay. 360 on the bicep swivel. And it's nice because the bicep if you look, it's not cut, just a straight line even, so it's cool to see that it still has that 360 there. Double jointed elbows. Nothing in the forearm. The wrists, though, they do swivel, as well as some rock. All right. The forearm armor does come off. Now, these are a sign there's an L and R on the armor there. Okay, the waist, about 45 degrees to each side, and then there's that ab crunch part here, so, and then there's also some swivel there as well, another 45 degrees. So overall, he can hit about 90, but you have to use both. Now for the back bend, ab crunch. Ab crunch, not not much. It's there, but it's not. It's nothing too crazy. Now looking at the hips here, outward, forward, back. No movement on this crotch plate here or anything like that. So it does limit, but not bad. 360, double jointed knees, feet forward and back. Rocker right there, and then. Decent ankle tilt. In fact, I'd call that good. That's pretty darn good ankle tilt right there. Oh. Alright, now 
for the hands. Switching them out. Kind of like a figure art, just that ball joint there. Then boom. And instead of each hand having like the guards molded onto them, you just peg it in. All right. So zoom it out a little bit. Try to get something like a landing pose quick. There we go. That's something. Bring this back some. Oh, make sure we get that ankle tilted all the way. And just something a little bit cool before getting into the armor here. Get that out of the way. Now looking at the armor itself, of course. The stand here. And this has always been neat. Whether it's this, the armor plus, it's a cool way to display it. Okay. You can see as a Swords of the Wildfire right there. I really hope they do a white armor too. That'd be awesome. But neat stuff. And basically you disassemble it and assemble it the same way. So Alright. Pops off. And then we're gonna use the forearm guards. These are actually uh, magnetized and these fronts of the feet come off. Okay. That hand guard comes off. The shoulder pads, of course. Now you keep one on because it's the same. Just pop the front of that off like that. The back comes off the same. Alright, so there's that. Almost done. And then, comes to the armor. And then the waist part's right here. Just pop right off. And boom. Before we get them armored up, just want to go over the other faces. So he comes with a smirking face. Got that side eye going there. Then a yelling face as well. Make sure I'm putting this on correctly. They go like, if you saw, they go kind of like slope down 45 degrees and then straight. It's really weird. I've never put on faces that have that kind of slope to it. But there's that. Very clean print. Sindel does faces. The human faces really well. It makes me wish they'd do a lot more human figures like pilots and things like that to be honest with you. But alright, now we can get him armored up. Okay. Ready to get this guy armored up. I'm going to take some parts off of him because we know we're swapping them out. So, forearm guards. 
and that left hand guard, as well as the fronts of the feet. Let me see if these pull out easily. Yes. There we go. And they're nice long pegs and things like that too, so they're good. And I forgot, the shoulder flaps come off as well. And the first thing, just for the sake of him being able to stand, get the new feet, fronts of the feet put on. Tap those. And the plugs are like an upside down T, so make sure you're aiming in, you know, putting them on correctly, or else you're gonna have some issues. Put the waist armor on first. I believe I put it on backwards there. All right, it's so one side, two side. Back armor. Where's it at? And it just plugs into the back here. Goes over. And the front armor clips on. Like so. As well as pegging in. Alright. Now with the waist armor, one side, I'm gonna go ahead and slide that sword out and that lets me show you guys how they go in too. Then the other side. Both sides plug in. Front clipped on first. Make sure that's plugged in all the way. This just goes over that plug. There we go. It's like it's not hard. Then you can see that square there. Make sure it's pressed together, and boom. Alright, and we are almost done. Alright, so the knees. Again, they just magnet onto the shins. Really easy. Shoulder pads. Now I'll zoom in here and show you how these go on. Alright. So you see, it has that little space there with the kind of gap in between there. This has those two pegs on the side and it just pops right in, so boom. And the front should have the logo on it. And I have to say this is Really, really, really well done. Everything goes together well. I haven't had experience with parts just popping off and things like that. Even the uh, magnetized parts, it's really neat. So let's get this plugged in. And again, remember with the forearm armors, because you can see it's not an actual peg, it's an L. And then this one says, appropriately, L for the left side. one for the right side. Boom. Actually. Alright, and you can see we are in there, man. Now with the swords, this is a mistake I made. You won't, because you're watching this. There are little notches right here, and that's how the swords slide in. There are... Zoom in. 
camera has such a tight focus. So you see there? On each side, you just take the sword and slide them in. And they hold in well with friction too, surprisingly. Alright, so just find it if I can. Now the way the swords work, you saw that it comes with the blades, so the handles obviously plug in separately. So don't try to put the blades into the sheaths or anything like that. Alright, make sure that one's straight as well. And the last thing's going to be the helmet. So let's do that. This just comes off at the front. And this face just slides out like the rest of them. Let's go with the default face for now. Plugs in. Then boom. Okay. And again, it just pegs in. If you have issues, you could always just put on the back of the helmet first and then go from there. And I like that the shin armor, knee armor, is magnets. Because of stuff like that, when you fumble them with it, it moves a little bit, it snaps right back into place. that done and there he is all right and I guess just for the sake of pulling out a ruler now he's at that six inch mark just over actually towards six and a quarter from my viewpoint right there you guys are round about nice bright red and what's cool is I'm not seeing any paint rub or anything like that it's a well put together piece Alright, now in terms of the armor and stuff like that, I'm not seeing any hindrance to the articulation, uh, besides the waist, because he has this arm around it, that purplish right there. He no longer has like the ab crunch and stuff like that. He still has some back bend, but he doesn't quite have all that. Now the skirt armor, to the sides at least, it does move out. That front is just over the crotch and then the back does not um, but with him and that's probably why they didn't worry too much about the crotch plate in general being in the way of the hip armor because of all of this business that would be there anyway once he's armored up which I'm sure is the way most people will have theirs displayed you know now let's take a look at his weapons though swords of the wildfire I think they're called the Rekakin all right. So you have some options here. And those come out, they pack in really tight. So I would actually recommend just taking the sheaths out of the holder on the back before I get too far into it. This does rotate as well, so. Oh, and of course I just plain unplug it, but yeah, it does rotate. that back in place. I'm actually really impressed by how well those hold considering their friction. All right. But post squirrel just plug in the blades there and where did my other handle go? Right there. Plug in the blade Okay, or you have the option, because his swords do attach, but not those. He comes with a pre-attached handle as well. You can go here, 
or here. Okay. I'll do some poses off camera and just show you guys and we'll get you guys out on the road. And here it is, Swords of the Wildfire. Good freaking stuff. Lots of articulation with the armor on and things like that. Don't have a lot of pieces falling off or anything. It's actually fun to play with. Let me get this a little bit more to the side. I enjoy this, man. I wish I could make this the cover photo for the review, actually. There's that. And here he is with the swords put together. One thing I do wish about this, just because it's hard to get his hands around the handles, is that it came with two separate pieces, like one had a peg, one doesn't, that kind of deal, um, or male and female peg ends or whatever. But either way, once you get it together, it looks really, really good. I dig this. All right, and one more just raining down on him. I wish I had that flame effect from the Super Robot Chigokin Golden Gal Gaigar, but I can't find it anywhere. That's what I was looking for, but I'm just using a generic signal stand. I am really impressed that this thing worked. It's light enough to where it holds it fine, but with the waist clips, I thought maybe because of that purple armor on the inside that it'd be too wide, but it's plenty. There is actually room for it to go out even farther. But yeah, it holds it up well. And again, this is just the generic signal stand that comes with a million of their figures and partner produced figures like the True Force Mega Man X figures came with clear versions of them, things like that. Yeah, holds it up well. So if you've got one lying around, I'm sure you do. If you've had more than two or three signal products, you have a couple, but looks good. Again, this has been Sinnoh's Chowda Dan Kadao, Ronin Warrior, Samurai Troopers, Rio of the wildfire. Honestly, really, really, really good figure. I didn't really have expectations for it. I just wanted it to be a solid six inch figure and it definitely meant that. I'm really impressed with how well the armor stays on while you're fiddling around with it and things like that. And I really don't have complaints about it. I'm not saying the figure's perfect, by any means, but just on a very surface level at least, I think average play, an average person who buys this is going to have a lot of fun with it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did you guys pick this one up? What do you think of it? Are you excited? What do you want to see released in this line? Etc. Etc. The full review or article and gallery will be really soon on kumasao.com. So check that out. Link will be in the description below. And like, share, subscribe. Thank you guys again. See you next time.